Vic Frank's Boat Company has long been a fixture on the Seattle waterfront. It was started in 1926 by my grandfather on this spot where we are right now. He always wanted to get into the boat building business. And so he, he came home one day uh, on the inner urban, which ran right past this place, and told my grandmother that, uh, well, he was very late, and my grandmother wondered what happened, and he said, well, I had to sell the car to buy a boat building business on Lake Union. And they moved lock, stock, and barrel up here and actually lived in an apartment next door. Dan Frank represents the third generation of Franks to run the family business. The first was his grandfather, Victor Arthur, followed by his father, Victor Russell. One of the yard's first projects has found its way back to its birthplace. It was my grandfather's version of the, quote, Lake Union dreamboat. Uh, they called them Sea Queens. We've got a photograph of it in the office with my grandfather and grandmother on the foredeck, and my father was four or five years old hanging from the yard arm, so we'll get it back to that state. The Roaring Twenties were a golden age for Northwest boats and boat builders. The Thirties were a different story. We got into the Depression, and of course, nobody was able to afford a, a pleasure boat, so they got into fish boats uh, at that time and, and, and repair work. Uh, to this day, our uh, bread and butter is the repair end of things. There was eight to ten yards like this around Lake Union, down the cut and so on, and uh, you know the workforce basically migrated from one shop to another. Uh, my my father would call up Earl Grandy and say, hey, I need some painters, and they'd come over, and then they'd go to, to Blanchard. So, uh, um, you know, the, it, was a, it was a great working environment. If Victor Arthur was the founder and Victor Russell the heir, grandmother Ruth was the grit that kept Vic Frank's boat company going after the yard burned in 1938. Her husband would never be the same. Almost exactly a year after that, he died of a, a massive heart attack. And my grandmother is still convinced that that fire did something to him. Ruth was determined to operate the boatyard as her husband had, but she faced unexpected challenges. Relatives demanded that she repay loans they had made to Victor Arthur. There was general agreement she was sure to fail. That was not the case at all. She, she probably is the reason we're still here. Uh, she was a very astute businesswoman, uh, but had to work with a series of partners that were actually just lead men because the banks wouldn't deal with a, with a business owner who was a woman back then. If the guys were using a uh, threaded plate and they put a bolt in it, and then they charged out the bolt, she'd go make sure they didn't use a nut in a washer. And so she, she dotted every eye. And up until the day she died, you couldn't keep up with her. My father was um, basically just one of the shipwrights at that point. She finally turned the reins over to him in, in the mid-50s and sold the company to him for a penny. The golden age still endured when Victor Russell took over the yard. Yeah, I think he kind of lucked out. Uh, the years that he was, was involved in the shop were, of course, the uh, wood boat building years continued until the uh, early 70s. It was the time when, when our customers had their shoemaker and their tailor and their boat builder. And so you didn't have this competitive, uh, let's go out and get bids on things and everything. You had relationships that continue to this day. Beginning in the 1960s, a revolution shook the world of the Franks and their counterparts. And then, then a huge change came, uh, came by going from wood to fiberglass, which my father was just he had to drag him kicking and screaming. He did not want to build fiberglass boats. He didn't think it was a very good material. But no, he couldn't convince any 
customers to build wood boats anymore. Ruth is gone now, but Vic Frank's boat company continues to rise to the challenge of building signature boats. Recently, the yard has been conceiving a super yacht called Bella Rosa. If the times have changed, the craftsmanship still endures.